Hello, you guys, and we are excited to embark on this journey into crypto and feel that Cardano is the right platform for our projects. Uh, first, let us go around the room and introduce some of the members of our team. Since I have the mic, I will start. Uh, many of you already know me in the Cardano community. My name is James Roop. I am the SPO for the stake pool Maximum Mint with the ticker AMint. I work directly with Fletcher Watson. He is below me here, and he is an SPO for Carpool with the ticker Vroom, B-R-O-O-M. Together, we've created educational decks teaching the community about blockchain technology and how it can benefit our community. And so today we are going to start introducing our team and then we're gonna speak a little bit about our projects. I'd like to hand the mic off to Joel Kisner. Uh, go right ahead, Joe. Hi, my name is Joel and I am the founder and CEO of Pinnacle Consulting and Advisors. Uh, so we're a licensed private investigation firm, but our specialty is dealing with regulatory and government oversight, compliance, investigative matters, uh, due diligence, and then the processes and controls surrounding that entire basket of things. And we keyed on a couple of different potential projects that Cardano looks to be a fantastic solution for, and we're looking to explore into those particular uh, areas. The rest of the core uh, group that I have that are working and leading this, and actually these projects are with us today. And I'd like to introduce uh, one of my managing partners, uh, Paul Wong, who has a long history of uh, human resources and third party administration and OSHA uh, style work here in Nevada. So with that, I'll turn it over to Paul. Hi, my name is Paul Wong. Um, I'm managing partner of Pinnacle Consulting Advisors. Uh, not to reiterate what Joel said, but yeah, we are licensed private investigation, uh, dealing with all, all policies and procedures and manuals of all sorts of avenues of business that need to be looked at and fall within compliance. Uh, I've got 25 years experience as a licensed third party administrator, uh, handling anything from workers compensation from the claims processing to the litigation. Uh, I've handled unemployment, uh, human resources, health, safety, and environmental uh, programs, risk management, uh, the telematics. Uh, I do all the hearings on unemployment from processing to litigation, uh, compliance with pretty much most government agencies I've had to deal with from the Division of Insurance, uh, OSHA, DOT, uh, the EEOC and even some EPA. Um, I've been experienced in the transportation industry, construction, trucking, mining, retail, uh, warehousing, even the food industry. Uh, we've had several projects that we've had go on for us now that have got us uh, crossing over into many different uh, avenues of business. And at this point, like I said, we are very well versed uh, in many different avenues of compliance. Um, I'd like to bring in our next uh, partner in our firm, Richard Forbus, to give him give you a little insight on his background and what he has done. Paul, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Richard Forbus. I'm the Senior Manager for Government Affairs for Pinnacle Consulting and Advisors. Uh, I've been with the firm since January 2022. I retired from the LVMPD Las Vegas Metro Police in December 2021 as a captain, and I'm a U.S. Marine Corps veteran. Uh, I've had extensive experience over the years in federal, state, and local government operations and projects, both as a lead and a participant, uh, auditing of day-to-day -day operations, standards, accreditation processes, and I have about 15 years of experience overall in those areas. Uh, I've been involved with staffing audits of our facilities with uh, Las Vegas Metro Police, financial audits of the constable's office as a uh, lead in that office and other areas of the division, and policy procedure development administration uh, in my duties. I was also overseeing training, uh, both in service and our Corrections Academy for the LVMPD. And I was a certified trainer with leadership and management with the state post, uh, police officer standards of training, and I have several years of experience with that. Under Pinnacle Consulting Advisors, I received my private investigator card under the firm recently, and I'm excited to be part of this project. I want to thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself. Next, I'll go to Maya Clark, uh, one of our partners on the uh, agency. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rich. Um, Maya Clark, and my background is in, as a paralegal in litigation, claims management, more recently in compliance and regulatory. And what I have come to, to the table with for the firm has been more on the research side and obviously the support side for any of the 
projects that Joel will bring to the table. Um, my experience has been over 25 years more recently in the gaming industry, uh, both for large corporations as in-house counsel and compliance and regulatory support staff. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on now to Ian. Thank you, Maya. My name is Ian Jay. I am a legal advisor and consultant to uh, Pinnacle. I have over a decade of experience practicing law in New York, Nevada, and numerous state, federal, and tribal jurisdictions. My primary focus is on providing advice in regulated industries, primarily the gaming industry, but also tobacco, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, and other industries that have a high level of regulatory oversight. Uh, most recently, I have worked with a number of large multinational publicly traded gaming companies and also have provided advice to financial institutions and investment vehicles. Uh, with that, I will pass it on to Kelly. Again, my name is Kelly Skidmore. I'm, um, I'm happy to be here. Um, I do the backgrounds and due diligence uh, for Pinnacle. Uh, my background includes, um, I used to work at the Department of Justice in their FCPA, which stands for Foreign Corrupt Practices Act Unit, which is international bribery. Uh, I, from there, I came to Vegas and I have been doing background checks, uh, not only for the gaming industry, but as well um, to crypto startups. And I've also been um, doing licensing exams um, as well as rep uh, reporting. Um, for multiple cryptocurrencies uh, startups. So um, I have nearly a decade of experience uh, with regulatory compliance from all of that. Um, and I'm just happy to be here. And I'd like to throw it on over to, to Benjamin. Thanks, Kelly. My name is Ben Floyd. I'm the president of Connectify Advisors, which is a full service advisory firm focusing on anti-money laundering compliance. Uh, Connectify also offers um, software, anti-money laundering compliance software for customer due diligence, transaction monitoring, and regulatory reporting. My background uh, is really 20 plus years in anti-money laundering and regulatory compliance, primarily with three um, large publicly traded firms, T. Rowe Price, uh, Walmart, one of the world's largest money services businesses, where I was responsible for their global anti-money laundering compliance program. and um, with uh, Caesars Entertainment, where I also held a global responsibility for their anti-money laundering compliance program. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Fletcher. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fletcher. I operate the carpool state pool, as James had mentioned. Thank you for the uh, brief introduction. And I uh, bring almost two decades of experience in healthcare, health and wellness, medical systems administration, and program design, development, and management. I'm very excited to be a part of this highly experienced team, driving innovation and expansion into some exciting and important domains. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that was all of our intros. Uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate all of your expertise. Um, we are going to pass it back to Joel again, and we are going to introduce our projects one by one. Uh, Joel, I'll let you start with the order that you feel uh, are most appropriate. Okay. I'll start first with the cannabis project because that struck me as uh, an area that we could be of assistance in. And it started kind of innocuously when I was uh, experimenting with places that we would find good use for our expertise. And I started looking into the crypto and the blockchain community at the, about the same time I started looking at the cannabis community because I was realizing that there were issues related to inventory controls and cannabis. There were archaic, almost manual slash attempts to be automated in their inventory uh, process of controls, let alone the restrictions they had on using uh, traditional banking methods that traditional businesses can enjoy that are highly restricted and limited in the cannabis industry. And I saw a lot of risk exposure uh, from the outside looking in and a lot of the walkthroughs and things I've done in the cannabis industry and, and meeting with some other consultants that were working in the space, identified a lot of uh, poor procedures and gaps that could be closed 
that I was seeing value related to the blockchain technology, the utilization of NFTs, as well as just kind of sourcing out a way for cannabis companies who are, will eventually be dealing with more and more, more regulation as time goes on, but right now struggling with trying to capitalize on, be more efficient and have more income so they can continue to build their markets. And another component that interested me was the, the state of Nevada is looking at onboarding consumption lounges, which would change the dynamics of how things work within the cannabis space. As I started looking into the space, I realized quite honestly, there was nobody like our group in the environment, either in blockchain or crypto in uh, Nevada, and certainly nothing like that in, in the cannabis realm. Uh, I took that uh, kind of underneath and I started looking a little deeper and started speaking with members of the Cannabis Compliance Board here in Nevada as well, and found out that they were looking for feedback, that they were looking for different ways to do things and different ways to improve. And I noticed that the tax rate in cannabis is around 50, 55% in Nevada. So it was obvious that while they have a lot of money coming in on a, on, in total, what they're left with to manipulate, to improve, and source better ways of doing business is very limited. And that led to me meeting uh, some folks at Tech Alley, which is a, an emerging business and small business event every month held by the city of Vegas. And uh, through that, I met James and Fletcher and started to uh, take a real deep dive into possible solutions. And Cardano struck me as a very viable solution because of the uh, way it designs their wallet, the blockchain technology, and the peer review basis of everything that's been being built with Cardano over the past couple of years lends itself to fit within traditional businesses a lot easier. And we can devise programs that are gonna manage uh, regulatory controls and desires over the businesses a lot easier with a program that, block, uh, that the blockchain and the cryptocurrency with Cardano can uh, afford us. So with that, I started building up uh, ideas on how we could reach the topic and reach solutions. And that brought us here today to ask for the funding so we could start looking for a single source uh, company. Uh, we have a couple that we're working with right now to try and explore the possibilities our goal is to find hopefully one company in a vertical situation where we can look at them from grow to manufacturing to distribution and move through a lot uh, easier in the environment. We have our cannabis uh, agent cards, so the impact on the company would be uh, less than if we did not. And then the use of the funds would be beneficial to the cannabis industry because, as I mentioned earlier, they are... Uh, restricted on the amount of disposable cash to help improve their performances and, and their processes. I don't think I missed anything there, James or Fletcher, did I? No, that was great. Thank you. And then uh, that is the cannabis one. Would you like to also introduce our, uh, our uh, city NFT project and maybe give a little bit of information about uh, that hospital as well? So part and parcel with me exploring the blockchain and the crypto and the NFT world, as well as the cannabis world through the same tech alley uh, event that's held every month. I met high level people within the city of Vegas, a couple of city councilmen, and then Josh from tech alley as well, who operates that event and had a unique request from the city of Vegas and that they were looking for a way to implement an NFT program to help market their downtown arts project and the development and the redevelopment actually of the downtown area, which has already started. There is a fairly large art component to the downtown area. They have their own in uh, metaverse that they operate in. They create their own NFTs within that space. And the city of Vegas is looking at a way to not only have NFTs sponsored by the city for events that would help fund the downtown arts project, but look at other ways to explore NFTs being used for marketing of the downtown area, as well as hopefully getting into a realm where they can start accepting cryptocurrency payments for some of the activities uh, related to operating the city of Las Vegas. 
they're looking for ideas and ways that we could source out uh, a solution to those requests. And when I was working with the cannabis opportunity, I saw this as another uh, ask that we could seek for some funding so we could explore how the city exactly wants to proceed, what they want to design, and what solution Cardano could afford them to handle the minting of the NFTs and the tracking of their marketing programs to help grow the uh, arts district in downtown Las Vegas. After that, we ended up having a conversation with a healthcare company. And this would be our third project that we are seeking funding for. The healthcare company is based in the United States. They offer healthcare services uh, to individuals and companies, largely B2B. Uh, and the services involve, lack of a better term, uh, medical tourism. They're taking advantage of that reality. And as such, they've created a network of hospitals, doctors, uh, labs, and other types of medical facilities to support their clientele that are largely high net worth and a large number of the consulates in different countries, South America, so Mexico City, Colombia, Brazil, and they want to expand and are expanding into parts of Africa, North Africa, and Asia. And they're looking at a way to streamline their client management process and the records that they have to keep and share with the doctors. Security is very important. So they want a way to control the data securely, transmit it securely, and have some ability to anonymize clients and randomize the service providers uh, along with the, some of their other security protocols because they work with NGOs and like I said, consulates where those security measures have to be intact. One of the things that I latched onto with the request is the ability for blockchain to solve that uh, problem of the mess of data and client records they have to keep and how they record the sharing information from a regulatory standpoint with HIPAA in the United States and each country or, or jurisdiction having different privacy laws and medical privacy uh, regulations, that was a unique ask. One of the other risks things they mentioned was the reality that all of their clients that travel have to travel with cash in their pocket and pay the serv service providers in cash. And I saw that as an opportunity for Cardano to uh, offer a payment solution for them instead of cash that would allow for better tracking, better security, and also uh, effectively remove some of the barriers to entry in that space because of trans uh, currency uh, rates being different in each country and $200 here not being the same as $200 in, Car in Colombia, Car Cardano can level the playing field. With that being such a large ask, we decided to break that down into segments and the monetary ask related to the healthcare endeavor is specific towards our gap analysis and investigative review. Uh, would have some legal and some AML components related to that just to make sure that we're covering all the bases. But the goal of that is to be able to present a roadmap in its entirety so that we could come back and use uh, James and Fletcher with the understanding of what we found through the investigative process, the roadmap of how they're gonna build the solutions that are gonna work uh, because each location is gonna have a different set of parameters that they have to operate with. And that investigation, investigation is gonna be critical to understanding how to do the build so it's successful. James, I don't know if I have anything else right now. Those are the three summaries of the programs we have right now, I think. All right, yeah, that does sound to be uh... Uh, pretty complete. I think that is a good scope of what we're looking at. So once again, we just wanted to introduce our team. We are Pinnacle Consulting and Advisors, to be technically accurate, and we are submitting these projects. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out, um, comment our, on our submissions, and we really would appreciate votes. If you guys have any questions, we'll be further developing these uh, submissions over the next few weeks, uh, fleshing out a lot of the details and explaining how we're going to deploy these uh, solutions in the current environments. So we uh, thank you and we appreciate uh, Cardano for all it has to offer for developers in the community and we are excited to take on this endeavor. Uh, we just thank you and uh, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you.